Hey friends, welcome back to Homestead on a Prayer. Today we're outside and we're going to give you a little tour of our chicken coop. Now I have my husband Dan here with me today because he is Hello. the one who did probably about 95% of the work building this coop. <laughs> I did do some of it, but he did most of the hard work. And so we're going to just give you guys a little tour and he's going to talk a little bit about some of the details that we put into this coop with building it. So let's go ahead and let our chickens out and then we'll give you guys a tour. So this coop is kind of based off of a pretty common coop plan you can find online called the Wichita Cabin Coop. So we took that coop plan and mostly followed it. We made a couple little modifications. I definitely recommend looking up some reviews from different people because they might give you ideas of little features that you want to add to just make your chicken coop really user friendly. So we're going to just show you some features that we really like in this coop. Some of them came with the original plans and some of them we kind of added in ourselves. So to start off with this coop, we started by doing a cinder block foundation. So I, see, see Dan, this is some of the work that I actually did. I dug out basically the footprint of the coop. And so all these cinder blocks are sunk into the ground several inches. And I dug this out basically so that we could level the ground and our coop would have a level platform to stand on. So the basic footprint of this coop is 10 foot by seven foot. That's one of the changes we made from the original plans because it called for a 10 by five foot coop. When I say coop, I'm including the coop itself and also the attached run. We wanted it to be a little bit bigger so that we would be able to fit a few more chickens in it. So we made it two feet wider. The coop itself is in this part here. We elevated it a little bit so the chickens would have this additional run space underneath. And then the rest of it is a fully enclosed run. You can see we have a roof on it to protect from aerial predators. Our entire run is enclosed with hardware cloth. Now this is definitely more secure than chicken wire. A lot of predators can really get through chicken wire. It's not all that strong. So the main purpose of chicken wire is to contain your chickens. It doesn't do all that much to protect them. So we use hardware cloth anywhere that there's an opening on this coop. That's again, some of the work that I did. I put up this hardware cloth. So Dan will tell you that he did all the, all the wood-based construction work and he did. So you can see the roof overhangs slightly and that keeps it from getting wet inside the coop in the run. So, so we have a little bit of overhang in all directions. So that really does protect our coop. Now we do let our chickens free range most days when we're home. You can see that we have this yard here surrounded by a chain link fence. So they're allowed to range within this chain link fence in area when we're home. When we're not home, they stay in this enclosed run here, which will keep them safe from predators, including aerial predators because of the roof. Now, because of the chain link fence in our yard, they will be safe from most predators, but they're definitely not safe from aerial predators or digging predators. So because of that, that's the reason why we only let them free range when we're home. So back to the coop. So let's show you guys a couple more details. So as Jen said, we did use the Wichita uh, plans. Uh, when we say we use the plans, it was really just uh, all, we didn't actually pay for any kind of plans. We kind of just went off the basic dimensions and I went off of a lot of photos. Uh, so a lot of this, I kind of uh, just kind of kind of did. Um, so I didn't really have like a full schematic or anything when I, uh, when I started building it. Uh, but it came out pretty well here. Um, there's a few, actually a few aspects I like of the coop. And one thing I was kind of always concerned about is always getting up early or having the kids get up early to let the chickens out. We do have the uh, run chicken automatic chicken door, which is really nice. That is based off of light. It'll it'll open when it's bright enough outside and close. I think it's like 30 minutes out after uh, I think it's sunset, I think. Uh, that's been working really well for us. So you can also change the settings on the chicken door. As Dan mentioned, we do have it set to close. I think it's 20 or 30 minutes after sunset. So we have ours. So ours will close at a different time every day, depending on sunset. You can also set it to close and open at specific times every day, if that works for you. We like to use the light sensing option. So this automatic chicken door also has a feature where you can hit the button and close it if you need to close it at a different time. Do you wanna demonstrate that, Dan? So you can see. So that's what it does when it closes. Meanwhile, our chickens are outside wondering why they've just been locked out of their coop. So we're gonna open that back up for them. So you can just hit the button again and it'll pop right back open. Okay, so um, 
This is our actual coop here. We lock it using these can of beaters here. We bought stainless steel, so you don't have to worry about the elements um, or any rust or anything along those lines. Uh, we wanted something that would be pretty secure, that we don't have to worry about raccoons being able to open it. Raccoons are real smart. Uh, we felt that this system should work, and so far it really has. We actually haven't had any issues with any predators so far uh, with our coop design here. Uh, but on the inside here, uh, Jen uses the, the deep litter method. Um, but some of the nice things that we did, or at least I think we did, um, I actually kind of made the floor uh, waterproof. Uh, I used, uh, you can't really see, but underneath here, uh, we used, I used what they call Red Guard. Uh, they use it in a lot of home construction, like bathrooms, uh, making things watertight. Uh, so if we wanted to, we could really spray down the interior and the water should just run out. Uh, but then I was kind of worried about the chickens being a scratch uh, and, get, and kind of ruin the Red Guard. So I had uh, luxury vinyl plank flooring left over. Uh, so our chickens actually have a uh, luxury vinyl plank floor. Uh, so that's also technically waterproof too. Uh, so we kind of wanted a real easy cleaning. Uh, we added this in here. Uh, so it's easier to sweep out all the litter. Yeah, and that holds in. As Dan mentioned, we do use the deep litter method. So basically, that that's a whole separate topic. But when you use the deep litter method, your litter is going to pile up pretty deeply. And we wanted something that's going to hold it in place so it's not going to come flying out whenever we open the door. But then, as Dan said, this is removable for when we need to clean. And you can also see up top here, I drilled a bunch of holes for uh, ventilation. Um, so there's holes in the front here and in the back wall. And those are also uh, lined with the uh, hardware cloth in the back, again, to keep predators out. Uh, keep it fairly cool in the summer and um, keep it, uh, I guess, dry really, right? Isn't that the, the purpose too? They don't get too much humidity build up, I believe. Yeah, especially in the winter so they don't get frostbite. Yeah, there you go. And we have three nesting boxes. Uh, similar concept here where we have uh, this bar here and we have wood back here. So again, for cleaning, we can easily sweep it out. Uh, we have the two roosts that I put in as well. And those roosts are removable too? Yes, those are also removable. So those will lift right up, um, which we, I guess technically could demonstrate, but literally just pull right up. Uh, so you would be replaced or clean. Um, and then we also space them far off of the back wall. So in theory, the back wall stay fairly clean. Apparently they still got a little bit. Yeah, there's there, a little but... bit of residue back there, but it's not as much as it could be. Yeah. Actually, this is a reminder that we need to clean that off. So I guess technically if we could do it all over again, maybe I would have pulled it a little farther forward, but then we had the window in the way. So uh, it's kind of what we're kind of stuck with, um, but it works well. Yeah. So you can see also that we lined both of the windows with hardware cloth as well. So pretty much when you have a chicken coop, predators are going to try to get in and it's pretty amazing the size of hole that they can get through. So we lined everything with this hardware cloth here. So that way, even if so that way, even if a raccoon or some creature like that is able to unlatch this window and open it, the hardware cloth is still here, so they won't be able to actually get to our chickens. So one other feature that we really wanted when we designed the chicken coop was exterior nesting boxes. We wanted to be able to get to the eggs without having to disturb the chickens. So our nesting boxes can be accessed from the outside. Now we have a canabiner here as well, because a raccoon could still work, work this latch, and so this will keep them out. So we can show you in here what the nesting boxes look like from this angle. Now we have one fake egg in each one. So those eggs you see in there are not actually our chicken's eggs. But as Dan was showing you before, these little boards pull right out and then it's really easy just to push the bedding through there and clean it out. Makes cleaning the nesting boxes really easy. And you can see we have this metal roof on here for weatherproofing as well. Now, this is our really high-tech method of keeping the windows open. We actually probably should, we did plan when we made this coop to come up with a better system to keep the windows open. But in the meantime, I was just using random pieces of sticks and wood that I found around and it's worked really well. So we haven't really been motivated to find another option. But this time of year, when it's so warm out, we leave the windows open pretty much all the time, even at night. Once it starts to get cold at night, we're going to close these up the chickens will still have the ventilation holes that Dan showed you before. So we won't have to worry about the air getting stale and musty in there. But this time of year, more ventilation is better. And so we leave the windows open as well. So I wasn't sure exactly what to do with the roofing. Uh, so what I did as I believe I used quarter inch uh, plywood and then I used, uh, you can kind of see in the edge there, corrugated roofing, uh, which is very durable. It should last for forever. Uh, the one thing I had not considered 
Um, and it's kind of annoying actually is we have this giant oak tree uh, right above it. So when the acorns fall, it is very, very loud. And this past, is it past spring, I guess? Last fall. Last fall, rather. Uh, we had so many acorns. It was incredibly, it was incredible the amount of acorns we yeah, had. Yeah, it was the most acorns that I ever remember in a growing season. Yeah, so <laughs> constantly we were hearing acorns bounce off the, uh, bounce off the roof. So if I could do it all over again, I'm not sure what I would do differently, but uh, that is something that I guess to consider what you have over over your chicken coop. Okay, so one other thing that we took into account when we built this coop was placement. We just showed you guys the big oak tree that's right behind the coop, and I'm sure you saw that there's lots of other trees around as well. So this coop's basically right on the edge of the woods. We did that by design because it is pretty important, especially in the summer, for chickens to have shade. We did not, as we mentioned, we did not think about the acorns falling on the roof. Normally we do not get as many acorns as we did last year, so hopefully that won't be too much of an issue in the future. But anyway, most chickens are more sensitive to heat than they are to cold, and so it's really important to make sure that they don't get overheated in the summer. So having our coop in the shade helps a lot with that. That keeps the actual coop cool, and it gives them a nice shady spot in the run to go during the day. Now inside the coop here, you're going to want to think about how you're going to provide food and water for them. We actually did a whole video on building this waterer here, and we really like this waterer. We started off with just the cheap, small chicken waterer that a lot of people start off with. It's, it's cheap, it's easy to find, it's easy to use, but it doesn't hold very much water, so it has to be refilled a lot, and it's open, which means that the chickens will constantly fill it with stuff. If you have chickens, you know that they're constantly scratching and everything gets dirty. And if you don't have chickens, you will find that out as soon as you get them. So we built this enclosed water system here, which I won't go into all the details on that because as I said, we have another video about that. I'll link that in the video description. So definitely check it out if you're interested in the chicken water. But you can see here, we have this hanging really sturdily from this beam up here because this gets pretty full. This gets pretty heavy when it's full. So we don't usually keep it full because we empty it regularly, but it's nice to have the option to have more water in here for if we're going away as for example, we're going camping this weekend and it's nice to know that our chickens will have all the water they need while we're gone. Now this feeder here, this is just your basic chicken feeder. There's nothing really exciting or interesting about it. It's just a cheap one you can get from Tractor Supply. You can see it's dirty. I did mention that chickens are not very neat animals and so it's going. To, it's just going to be dirty. But we use this, um, I think this is actually just a plant hanger we got at Home Depot just to hold this. We originally, when we had our small waterer, we had that hanging the same way over here. When we swapped it out for this one, which is much heavier, we put it through the, we put a bolt through the beam. But this one stays pretty light, and so we just use this little plant hanger here. So you're just going to want to think about some way to have food and water for your chickens. You want it to be off the ground because it will stay a little bit neater that way, and it's easier for them to eat when it's a little more at their head level. So another thing that you need to think about with chickens is calcium supplementation. So you can see we have a little dish here. These are mostly their chickens. These are mostly our chickens eggshells that I've baked and crushed and put back in here so that they can take the calcium back from making those eggs. Making eggs takes a lot of calcium. So you want to give those chickens back the calcium they need. You can also use crushed oyster shell in here, which we do. We kind of go back and forth between giving the chickens their own eggshells back and giving them crushed oyster shell. This is just meant to be a feeding dish for an indoor bird. So I just kind of attached it here. It just screws on through the hardware cloth and we just refill this whenever it runs out. So for the, the ramp here to get into the coop, uh, I think that's just, uh, I forget what that is, it might be three eighths uh, plywood. And I used uh, stainless steel screws here. So for the spacing here, I believe it's about six to eight inches. Um, the spacing needs to be closer together for those boards the steeper the incline uh, for the chickens. Uh, but this here, I want to say six to eight inches. Um, also, one thing to be no to make note of is you don't want the screws to really come through. So be conscious of that. Uh, you don't want any way of the chickens of scratching or, or injuring themselves. Um, so make sure you're not using screws that are too deep. Also, I used hook and eyes here. So the ramp is easily removable. Uh, that's just for cleaning or for replacement or whatever. Um, so that's what we did and so far it's worked out pretty well. 
All right, so we had a few issues uh, with large rocks when we were doing the foundation. And then this section right here, the rock was so big, I just didn't want to try to take it out. Um, so we ended up turning the cinder block on its side, but this actually worked out really well for so us. So we used a, I used a two inch PVC pipe. I ran it through the cinder block here and then all the extra spacing you can see, I filled with, uh, with cement. And then I used a two inch uh, wire grommets. Now in the winter time when uh, the water wants to freeze for the uh, the chickens. We can just run an extension cord right through here and no predators or anything will get in there and we can get power to our uh, water dish. All right, so kind of a couple little bonus things. These aren't necessities for chickens. We just have some extra things for them to climb on in here. You can see we just have a stump that I grabbed out of the woods. We have an extra cinder block. We actually used to use the cinder block to prop our water up on when we were changing it, but it turned out that the chickens love to stand on it and lay on it so much that we just left it in here for them. So we just have a couple little things for them to kind of hang out on right now. As the weather gets colder and they're going to be spending more time inside this run, we're going to be adding some fun little things for them, like maybe some chicken swings or just other things that they can do over the winter to keep them from getting bored. So we'll take you guys along for that journey and you can see what we do. We're also going to be wrapping this run in some sort of plastic. Um, basically, that will allow them to, even when it's cold and windy out, I think the main issue with chickens isn't as much the cold as it is the wind. So we're going to be wrapping this run in plastic so that they can still come out here without the cold winter wind blowing on them. And we will do that when it starts to get really cold. Now, the one drawback to having these extra little toys in here for them is the poop. So you can see there's marks from old poop in here. They have to be scraped down pretty regularly. So I'm just gonna show you the super cheap and easy tool that I use to scrape all this stuff off. So to scrape the poop off the chicken's little toys in there, I just have this really cheap little, I think it's like a putty knife or a spackle knife, something like that. I got it for $2 at Walmart. And I just keep this hanging here. You can see I have a little nail here just so that it's always where I need it. I just kind of scrape off like any little poop or anything else that gets on here. And just to keep it as clean as possible. I also use this to scrape things off the ramp as well. So thank you guys so much for joining us on this little tour of our chicken coop. We hope that you got some great ideas that you can hopefully incorporate in your own chicken coop. As you can see, it's not completely done. We still have a little bit of staining that has to be done. And as I mentioned, we have a couple little things we're planning to add for the chickens for the winter, but we've been really happy with it so far. It's kept our chickens safe and it's kept them happy, I think. So leave a comment and let us know what special features do you have in your chicken coop that really make life easier for you and that make your chickens happy. We would love to take a look at any other features that you guys recommend and maybe we'll even incorporate some into our own coop. You can definitely build a coop a lot more inexpensively than we did, but we've been really happy with this coop. So if this coop seems like something that you may want to try as well, do a search for the Wichita Cabin coop plans and you'll find lots of resources for those plans on the internet. And then you may consider incorporating some of the little extras that we incorporated as well. All right, so I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope that you enjoyed spending time with us today and seeing our chicken coop, and we will see you guys soon. All right, I'll talk to you later. See you next time.